Hello and welcome to Inside Science. Let's start with the first issue that is fifth PSLV launch that is Polar Synchronous Launch Vehicle. And before that we will describe uh, in brief what is the difference between PSLV and GSLV. Guys PSLV mainly serves to launch heavy payloads to low earth orbits and polar orbits. Also the surfer throwing lighter payloads to geosynchronous and sun synchronous orbits. In case of GSLV, it is really a big guy and it sends heavy payloads specially to geosynchronous transfer orbits and geostationary orbits. So what is this sun synchronous orbit? This sun synchronous orbit to which this PSLV sends their uh, rockets uh, especially are uh, those uh, uh, where the angle between uh, the line joining the center of the earth and the satellite and the sun is constant throughout the orbit. Remember it that is known as sun synchronous orbit. In case of PSLV and GSLV both are the satellite launch vehicles or known as rockets developed by ISRO. In case of PSLV, it designed to deliver the earth observation or a remote sensing satellites and in case of GSLV, we try to send communication satellites to the highly elliptical geosynchronous transfer orbit or known as GTO. Recently Chandrayaan 2 was launched and it was launched by GSLV, remember it. So we'll discuss in details. Uh, uh, let's uh, discuss uh, from recently India's polar satellite launch vehicle that is PSLV C-48 marked, marked it 50th launch by injecting India's advanced radar imaging earth observation satellite that is Resat 2BR1 we'll discuss. This PSLV C-48 also injected 9 other customer satellites from Japan, Italy, Israel and the US um, into their intended orbit. This was 75th launch vehicle mission from the Satish Dhawan Space Center Srihariputa. Guys remember two organizations in India one is Delhi Metro and is, one other is ISRO. They are really working very well uh, in case of their organizational capacity and their scientific research. So um, reset to be uh, R1. The C-28 kg reset to be R1 is placed into 566 km orbit at an inclination of 37 degrees. It is the second, uh, second satellite in the Research 2B series and along with the Katosat 3, it is the part of spy satellites. And the satellites will keep a check on infiltration by allowing round the clock surveillance across the border. It has a life of 5 years. Research 2BR1 is expected to bolster the country's border monitoring measures besides aiding in disaster management, agriculture and tracking forest cover. It is equipped with synthetic aperture radar that is SAR that can be take pictures of the earth both during the day and night irrespective of the cloud conditions. So let's discuss in detail about PSLV. This is the third generation launch vehicle of India and it is a four stage launch vehicle with the first and third stage using solid rockets motors and second and fourth stage using liquid rocket engines. It is the first Indian launch vehicle to be equipped with liquid stages. Initially PSLB had a carrying capacity of 850 kg but has been enhanced to 1.9 tons. The PSLB has helped take payloads into almost all the orbits in space including geostationary transfer orbit that is GTO, the moon, Mars and would soon be launching a mission to the sun. So in case of GSLB we have discussed that is uh, it sent uh, uh, Chandrayaan 2 uh, and it um, this PSLB has a history of successful launches of payloads that include Chandrayaan 1, Mars Orbiter Mission and Space Recovery Mission that is PSLB. In case of GSLB Chandrayaan 2 remember it. The PSLV has failed only twice in its history, first in 1993 and second in 2017. The first failure was PSLV D1 rocket and second was PSLV C39 rocket. So it can be important, so just have a look on it. So the next issue is Shore Temple. The Shore Temple uh, on the northern side of the Shore Temple in Mamalapuram, that is Tamil Nadu, is facing severe sea erosion. Shore temple is one among number of Hindu monuments at Mamalapuram that is Mahabalipuram 
on the Coromandel coast of Tamil Nadu. It is considered the finest early example of medieval southern Indian temple architecture. It was built probably in the reign of Narasimha Varman II, also known as Raja Simha, that is a Pallava ruler who reigned from 700 to 728th century. Unlike most of the neighbors other site, it is built of cut stones rather than carved out of the caves. It has two shrines, one dedicated to Shiva and the other to Vishnu. It has been built in Dravidian style. Its style is characterized by pyramidal cutinal type tower that consists of stepped stories topped by a cupola and finial, a form quite different from the northern Indian Sikhara. The Mamalapura monuments and temples including the Shore Temple complex were collectively designed, uh, de designated as UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1984. It is very very important UNESCO World Heritage Site and it is pyramidal Kituna type tower. Please remember it. It is very very important. So the next issue is Taj uh, Trapezium Zone that is TTZ. Recently the Supreme Court has permitted Northern Railways to cut over 400 trees in the Taj Trapezium Zone for construction of an additional rail track between Delhi and Agra on the condition of mandatory compensatory afforestation. Supreme Court ruling on that in response to a public interest litigation, uh, litigation seeking to protect the Taj Mahal from environmental pollution, the Supreme Court of India delivered a ruling in December 1996 that banned the use of coal or coke in industries located in TTZ. So in comment box mention what is public interest litigation in polity you might have read. It is very very important. And the Supreme Court ordered for switching over from coal or coke to natural gas and relocating them outside the uh, TTZ or shutting it down. So this is the Taj Trapezium. Here is your Fatehpur Sikri. Here is your Agra Fort and is your Taj Mahal. So and here is Akbar's tomb. So if you connect all, you will create a trapezium like structure. So, so I am bad at drawing. So I can't. So you can have a look on it. So the next is next thing is the central government in exercise of the powers in the same issue that is Taj Trapezium Zone we are covering uh, the central government in exercise of the powers conferred under the Environmental Protection Act 1986 has constituted the Taj Trapezium Zone Pollution Prevention and Control Authority 1998. This TTZ is a defined area of 10,400 square kilometer around the Taj Mahal to protect the monument from the pollution. This TTZ is so named since it is located around the Taj Mahal and is shaped like a trapezium. It comprises monuments including three world heritage sites named Taj Mahal, Agra Fort and Fatehpur Sikri. We have discussed the three. Okay. Taj Mahal, Agra Fort and Fatehpur Sikri in TTZ. Geographical location. The geographical limits of the Taj Trapezium zone is defined in the shape of a trapezium lying in the Agra division of the state of UP and in the Bharatpur division of the state of Rajasthan. Always remember Taj Trapezium includes UP and Rajasthan, not only UP. Okay. So uh, one question can be uh, possible in mains like discuss the architectural and cultural significance of Taj Mahal. So the next issue is Subramanya Bharati. So uh, we covered this issue from PIB in no newspaper or nothing it is covered. So uh, we are especially picking up those topics which are mentioned in government websites and very very important from films. So guys uh, try to uh, make a note out of it or take a screenshot. All the notes you are demanding as PDF it will be sent to you just before two months of prelim. Now if I, uh, I will be posting that you will be uh, just reading the uh, PDF and you won't um, uh, this uh, watch the videos from uh, beginning to the end so it will be difficult for you to learn too many things whatever we are writing we are saying so many things so it is important from you so Subramaniam Bharti the Prime Minister of India paid tribute to poet reformer Subramanya Bharti on his 137th birth anniversary describing him as a symbol of patriotism C. Subramanya Bharti was born on 11th December 1882 in Etyapuram village of Tirunvelli district in Tamil Nadu. He was a poet. 
freedom fighter, social reformer from Tamil Nadu. Guys, remember at the age of seven, he became a biggest poet in Tamil Nadu. So at the age of seven or six, we, we don't know the difference between pen and pencil. That time he was writing poems, so talented he is. So we should revere him. He was known as Mahakabi Bharathiya and his songs on nationalism and freedom of India helped to rally the masses to support the Indian independence movement in Tamil Nadu. Few of his poems are Kannan Pattu, Nilabhum, Vannimum, Katrum, Panchali Savatam and Quil Pattu. You guys don't remember all the things, only remember this Pattu, Katrum, Savatam and Pattu. So uh, in, in prelims, if they are asking, you can easily find it out. He published the sensational Sudesa Gitang Gitangal. That is very very important. Sudesa Gitangal in 1908. In order to proclaim its revolutionary uh, uh, ardor, Bharati had the weekly newspaper named India printed in a red paper. He was the first paper. It was the first paper in Tamil Nadu to publish political cartoons. He also published and edited a few other journals like Vijaya. He attended the annual sessions of INC and discussed national issues with extremist leaders like Bipin Chandra Pampal, B.J. Uh, Tilak and B.V.S. Iyer. His participation and activities in Banara session in 1905 and Surat session in 1907 of the Indian National Congress impressed many national leaders for his patriotic fervor. The next issue is Rashtriya Vyasri Yojana. Coverage Senior citizens belonging to BPL category and suffering from any of the age-related disability or infirmity, uh, low vision, hearing impairment, loss of teeth and locomotor disability. What assistance is provided? Assisted living devices which can restore near normalcy in their bodily functions, overcoming the disability or infirmity manifested, they are free of cost. Funding. This is a central sector scheme. What is the difference between central sector scheme and centrally sponsored scheme? In case of central sector scheme, 100% funding is given by the government of India. In case of central sponsored scheme, uh, state has a share in it also. This is a central sector scheme fully funded by the central government. The expenditure for implementation of the scheme will be made from the senior citizens welfare fund. The scheme will be implemented through the sole implementing agency that is Artificial Limbs Manufacturing Corporation that is Alimco which is located in Kanpur and it is a PSU under the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. In case of multiple disability or, inf or infirmities manifested in the same person, the assistive devices will be given in respect of each disability or impairment. Beneficiaries in each district will be identified by the state government or UT administrations through a committee chaired by the deputy commissioner or district collector. As far as possible, 30% of the beneficiaries in each district shall be women. It is very very important. As far as possible, 30% of the beneficiary in each district shall be women. So, next issue is Maharaja Surajmal and Third Battle of Panipat. So, we'll discuss in detail because it was a protest going on after the movie release that is named as uh, Panipat. Rajasthan Chief Minister Ashok Gehlot has urged the censor board to take a note of allegations that Ashutas Gwarikar's film Panipat had wrongly portrayed Maharaj Surajmal. What the issue? In the film, Maharaj Surajmal of Bharatpur is reportedly shown as having denied help to the Maratha army, one of the factors leading to the Maratha's eventual defeat. The film is based on the third battle of Panipat. Who is Maharaja Surajmal? Born in 1707, in the kingdom of Bharatpur, Rajasthan, he ruled in 18th century and was the son of Jar Chieftain Badan Singh. So it is told it is told that Kon Keheta hai Akele Jang Jiti Nahi Jati. Banke koi Surajmal Jang me Utre to Sehi. This is the most famous couplet in uh, this, this region. So this is uh, this is hurting their sentiments when the film is trying or portraying to uh, make the movie manipulated. So some of the important monuments include the Palace of Dig and the Bharatpur Fort. The third battle of Panipat. Uh, let's discuss the three battles. First battle of Panipat which took place in 1526 between Babur and Ibrahim Lodi. It laid the foundation of the Mughal Empire in India. Remember 1526. 
just after 30 years that is in 1556 the second battle of panipat was fought between hemu vikramaditya and akbar and it cemented mughal rule the third battle of panipat fought between maratha forces and invading armies of afghan general ahmad shah abdali of durani empire in 1761 from maratha side that is sada sivrao bhau was leading so abdali was supported by two indian allies the rohilas the from najib uh, rohilas najib uddolla uh, afghans of the dawab region suja uddolla the nawab of awad finally the marathas were defeated in the battle the marathas lost some of their most important generals and administrators including sada sibrao and uh, um, the heir apparent bisorao of the peswa household ibrahim khan gargardi janaki rao sindhia and yeshwantrao puar so these are important things please have a look on it a prelim question which is asked in 2016 was belt and road initiative is sometimes mentioned in the news in the context of the affairs of options are african union brazil european union and china the items is china the next question which is asked in a prelim 2016 was rashtriya garima abhiyan is a national campaign to options are rehabilitate the homeless and destitute persons and provide them with suitable sources of livelihood second is release the sex workers from their practice and provide them with the alternative sources of livelihood third option is eradicate the practice of manual scavenging and rehabilitate the manual scavengers the last option is release the bond laborers from their bondage and rehabilitate them the right answer is c that is eradicate the practice of manual scavenging and rehabilitate the manual scavengers so in this way we will arbitrarily will provide questions so that you will be practicing all the prelims uh, previous year prelim questions thank you guys have a nice day